Hi guys, welcome back. But if you're new here, it is Ruth with the K and welcome to my channel. On this channel, we'll talk about beauty, skincare, lifestyle, and all of that stuff. So make sure you hit the bell to get notified every time I post new videos so you don't miss out. So with that being said, let's jump right into today's video. Today, I'm talking about things that I wish that I did in my 20s. You know, as I'm approaching my 30s, you know, you know, I'm just like reminiscing, saying, mm, maybe you could have done this while you were younger. Now that I'm old, I'm like, oh, is it too late? It's not like I regret it, but I wish I did it, basically. For me, I believe that age is just a number and nothing's going to stop me. If I'm in my 40s or 50s, I'm going to live life to the fullest. Nothing is going to stop me at all. And thank God for social media now. We see a lot of people in their 50s still living life, you know, still, you know, getting their groove on, you know, still looking sexy, hot, you know. So I believe that everything is just, you know, your mindset. At the end of the day the number one thing that i would say that i wish that i did more while i was younger was you know traveling or you know taking trips so i didn't really travel enough because i don't know why i'm such a homebody i love to stay at home i love to just you know netflix and chill you know make my food eat on my bed on my phone social media that's what that's my idea of having fun for me anything going on kind of like stresses me out yes traveling is expensive we all know that but we're planning you know you'll be able to achieve all these things so i've met people that you know have traveled to like several different countries and it's not like they have all the money in the world but it's something they prioritize and for some people they could um, you know they could value you know buying designer bags some might be human hair some might be makeup some might be traveling i feel like traveling is something that you know you will never regret you know is a memory that you create for yourself it's an experience you know and it just lives with you for the rest of your life you know you meet new people new adventures you know just live life have fun forget about every other thing in the world it doesn't have to be a luxurious country it could be another african country ghana you know cape verde could be europe it could be you know just explore the world you know you don't have to like break the bank i think one thing that limits me or limits us nigerians is that we don't have a lot of like you know visa free countries to visit you know we have to keep applying for visas here and there here and there here and there and it kind of like takes a toll on you now right now i've said that nothing's going to stop me i will try if i get denied so be it but i'll keep trying my best you know and just build my experience build my travel history so i can visit more countries um the second thing i would say is you know not taking risks so younger me i used to be so scared of taking risks i'm just like you know what i have this thing let me manage it i have this money let me manage it you know i just kept myself like in a box you know i didn't want to take risk i'm like ah, i don't know what's out there you know i'm scared of losing everything you know but at the end of the day if you don't take risk how do you want to know what's better for you what's good for you and that's one thing i love about the newer generation the gen z's they are not scared to take risk at all but i'm getting older i decided to take more risk you know you know try more things you know start a new business you know go out you know travel you don't know i don't know what's out there for me but i'm going to just take the risk anyway you know quit that job you know start something at this point in my life at this phase right now in the middle of it i'm taking risk like big risk starting this channel was a big risk i bought like this equipment cameras everything without even starting the channel i didn't have one subscriber <laughs> you know i took that risk i started the channel you know right now i'm taking risk you know and i don't know what's out there for me i don't know what to expect you know i can't keep being here i don't want to limit myself i'm getting older and you only live once you know and I don't, I don't want to regret anything in the future and be like oh i should have done this you know years ago i should have done that you know that time you know but i don't want to feel like i wasted or missed an opportunity i'm going to take risk regardless sometimes you take risk and it just goes like the other way but at the same time you'll be like okay at least i tried you know you will not regret not taking it you said okay i took the risk and this will happen moving on you know that's it it's that's it. it's not that simple but i mean <laughs> so another thing will be dating too early yes i said it okay i feel like not like i regret it but something that i want to teach my kids or when i have kids i want to tell them i'm like you know what you want to find yourself first you know who you are know what your goals are your priorities you know you want to study yourself and to be honest you know finding yourself or Getting to yourself is a whole process. And as human beings, we keep feeling our beliefs, our thoughts, our processes. So nothing is static anyways, you know. But at the same time, you want to know the kind of person that you are. You want to know, you know, your values, your cause and, you know, all those things. So imagine not knowing who you are, you know, and then you want to go and know who another person is. Another old human being and from another generation, from another 
mother another blood you know genotype everything is different from you you know it's hard you know so it's gonna take a lot of like efforts you know so if you go ahead to date early without even know who you are to be a disaster because even the other person they probably don't even know who they are as well so imagine two people two individuals from different backgrounds coming together they don't know themselves totally but they want to come and know each other so i keep saying dating because i'm a nigerian and dating and relationship kind of like the same so what i mean right now is relationship so yeah don't get into a relationship too early you know, until you find yourself work at the beginning but you know as time goes on to start to like clash is really messy but if you're the time if you're committed i mean it will work so for me i started dating early i wouldn't say it was a mistake you know because i mean it's still going very well very good right now you know nonetheless i know how much it took me to get here you know the effort the time you know misunderstandings you know it took a lot and as i was getting older i was finding myself i was like hmm, if i'd known this earlier in a relationship maybe this wouldn't have happened that wouldn't have happened you know but i mean it is what it is it's not wrong to date early but i would say try to know your person as an individual first before going to date other people so still on the topic of not finding yourself before relationship this is also kind of like connected so basically i would say i kind of like was trying to be like other people when i was younger because i didn't know who i was you know so i'll try to change myself trying to be what i'm not trying to be like a trying to be like b you know and i'm unique everybody's unique in their own ways you might be similar but we are all unique like nobody's the same person or same i'm a twin my twin sister and i are totally different but we are very identical like one egg piece into two you know placenta together basically we are identical but we are different you know our likes and mine are similar but we are very different you know we we act differently we handle things differently from a young age i was always like being compared to my sister they'll be like oh you're taller you're shorter you're quiet you are you know outgoing you know you're bigger you're smaller like okay here we go again you know they're always comparing us long time I, I used to want to like be like my sister because i'm the quiet type she's a talkative you know she talks a lot you know i'm more reserved she's more outgoing i realized that at some point i was trying to be like her because i didn't like the fact that they were comparing us like don't compare me you know i'll be like no we're the same i talk a lot too i smile too you know we're the same thing and one day i was like okay you know what yes i'm quiet yes i'm shorter yes okay you know i got tired of trying to like convince people you know i'm like you know i'm gonna set me for me but i'm like okay, you know what yes i don't talk yes i love to stay indoors yes i'm not the fun to and i take things too seriously yes i'm too determined yes i'm too ambitious but that's what makes me that's what makes me unique and i'm not sorry about it i've accepted it like a big girl and i've embraced it so i started to know things now about myself and not things like oh i like blue or yellow or i love jello fries that kind of thing no i started to realize that oh i prefer coffee to tea i hate the smell of roses my favorite flavor is vanilla very simple and plain you know i don't know have a favorite color so that kind of thing i'm like this is who i am and i've come to terms with it so the other thing will be not putting god first so i'm a christian basically you know i grew up in a christian home i have christian parents i have a christian background i've known god for many many years but i wasn't putting god first in my life because i did not really know god so i'm like you know if you don't know somebody don't put them first in your life because you're like it's just god up there you know he is high and mighty and all of that thing but at the same time i realized that my life was just like you know upside down everywhere basically and that was because i wasn't putting god first but as i got older i started to like know god for myself i started to like build relationship with him you know i realized that see me putting god first in my life will save me from a lot of troubles that i've you know that i've entered or you know gone into even decisions that i've taken that you know didn't turn out so well it's same as taking risk so now before i take risk i will ask god god is this what you want me to do is it okay and i'll wait for like a word from him or a sign from him before i go ahead and this has saved me from a lot of mess a lot of disaster that's why right now i'm not scared of taking risk that risk that i have in mind i will consult god first and then if i'm i feel good in my spirit about it i'll go about it you know and it's going to work stage of my life like you know putting god first has just saved me from a lot of trouble and i'm like i wish i did this earlier like i wish i don't started doing this way younger like i would not be in a lot of like dilemma right, right now you know but it's never too late to be honest so now i wake up in the morning and before i go about my day even the littlest things i just like kind of like you know put god first you know 
And they said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So this simple verse has really, really like helped me, directed me, you know, and everything is just happening so smoothly. It's not the best right now, but um, I feel good about it. You, you know, just seeking God first, basically, and putting him first in everything that I do. Another thing will be not taking supplements and multivitamins. Like, to be honest, eh, I used to think that, because when I was young, I used to think that, oh, you know, what does supplements are for like older people in their 50s or 60s. It was like, why oh, would I wake up in the morning and start taking drugs, you know, down my throat? Because it didn't make any sense to me. I'm not sick. I'm fine. You know, but as I grew older, and I think I just came across one, I was dealing with acne and I was recommended one, you know, multivitamin to take to help with my skin and all of that. And um, I mean, besides my skin, you know, glowing and it clearing my acne, I felt so good. I felt so alive. I didn't realize how much I was living like on 1%. Like, you know, I started sleeping well, I started eating well, you know, because something about me is my hormones are always all over the place. Today, I can eat, 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 eat. Tomorrow, I'm just like, I'm never hungry at all. You know, all those things. I realized that I started sleeping well, you know, I'll feel good about myself. I don't feel unnecessarily tired for no reason because I struggle with sleep a lot. You know, I don't sleep early. I have like partial insomnia. You know, a lot of things that, you know, that are kind of like affecting me as a human being. Guys, multivitamins, supplements, I must have, you know, whether you're young or old. So please, though, it's not for old people. <laughs> I don't even know why I thought that because I remember when I was young my mom used to take like this fish oil and I hated the smell of that thing you know but she used to take it so I thought maybe it was for them but to be honest though guys if you can get yourself with multivitamins and take them every day as regularly as you can it will really help you be healthy be more active in general another thing would be not using sunscreens so again I thought I mean stupid me I thought that, you know, SPF was for, you know, people with lighter skin, you know, I just felt like if you were light skinned, you need SPF. I thought that if you're dark skinned, you don't need SPF. So I have a video on SPF on my channel and I keep talking about this. SPF is very, very important because it protects you from both UVA rays and UVB rays and protects your skin from getting damaged. So I was doing everything to my skin. I was exfoliating. I was treating it right, you know. But I wasn't using SPF, so my skin wasn't healthy. I was still struggling with hyperpigmentations here and there, you know. My skin had like a lot of patches. And guys, when I started using SPF, my skin went from like 70% to 95%, basically. SPF protects your skin from sun damage, you know, from premature aging, you know, from wrinkles, you know. This helps to keep the elasticity of your skin together. So, you know, your skin still looks healthy even at an older age. It helps to keep your skin complexion even. It reduces the risk of skin cancer. It improves your skin health in general. So that's whether you're dark skin or light skin, you still need SPF. Because even as a woman of color, you know, your skin can still get damaged, you know. So you also want to use SPF in your routine every day. So another mistake I made in my 20s was not prioritizing myself. Basically, I was putting myself first. You know, I'm such a yes woman. You know, yes, yes, yes. You tell me, oh, can you help me with this? Oh, I will try. Yes. You know, can you do this for me? Yes. I did not know how to say no. You know, I have a lot of things, you know, on my table. But when you come to me and ask me for help, I don't know how to just not help. So this as a positive and the negatives, you know, because I've always like, you know, having to put other people first before me. I wasn't getting shit done for myself. I always wanted to like do everything for everybody. Like, you know, I want to be there for them when they're sad, I'm there. When they need this, I'm there. When you need to hang out, I'm there. I'm always there for everybody. Meanwhile, I'm not there for myself. So as I got older, I realized that, you know what? Time is money, you know? So I'm going to put myself first, regardless of the situation, regardless of how they feel about it. And I want to be unapologetic about it. I said no to somebody the other day. They wanted me to tell them something. I'm like, you know what? Right now, I can't. I'm really busy. I can't. You know, I was kind of, I felt bad that I said it. Or that I couldn't help them poor I was glad that I did because I was going through a lot I had a lot on my plate and I couldn't just do it because if I do it I'll do it with like I'll do it just half-mindedly I wouldn't put my all into it and that's the kind of person that I am you know, the other day too I got invited somewhere and I was supposed to go and I just I just didn't feel like it I had a lot I had to film I had to edit I had to do so many things and I'm like you know if I go to this place yes I will have fun but all these things will still be undone you know i'm like you know what me first 
let me stay back and do these things and maybe another time i'll plan myself better to accommodate this thing i want to always put myself first now i want to think of me first i want to be selfish for my goals for my achievements for everything that i have planned for my life before having to cost the other people you know if it comes out the wrong way i'm sorry but me first so another thing will be my younger self i wasn't expressive at all you know i would just keep things in i would not say how i feel i'll be like you know what it's better to just not say anything, say anything at all you know but I just realized that I was holding back so much, you know, I had so many things in my head, in my mind that I want to say that was unsaid and it was getting too much for me. I'm like, you know what, right now, I don't even care. I would just say. So now I'm now more expressive with my feelings. If you do something to me that I do not like, I will tell you there and then and I will let you go. I don't want to want all things back, you know, in my mind, in my head because I have a lot of things I'm dealing with. So I don't want to add that to, you know, what I'm dealing with. So I will see how I feel. I will see how you make me feel. If you ask for my opinion, I will give it to you. That's how I am right now. You know, I do not want to hold back anything at all because I feel like it wouldn't take me anywhere. Holding back so much, keeping things too much, one day it would explode and to be like, oh, you're very reacting, you know, that kind of thing. And this doesn't have to be personal relationships only, even life and work in general, you know, in whatever I'm doing, you know, in my creative side, I want to be able to express myself the way I feel about something. I don't want to hold back from doing what I feel I should do or what I want to do. I don't want to always be one way. If I'm happy, I want to express myself. If I'm sad, I want to express myself. I want to express the way I feel at any point, at any time. So yeah, guys, um, I think that's all I have to say. You know, if there's more, I'll make a part two. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope, I hope this video was not a long one, to be honest, because I just kept talking and talking. So let me know in the comment section what you wish you did while you're younger. And just like tag it like a note to my younger self or note to younger self. Yeah, guys, um, if you enjoyed this video, if you like this video, make sure you like share it subscribe you know hit the bell to get notified for more of my videos and more content so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in my next video